Welcome back to Let's Play Clive Barker's Undying. I'm Burning Dog Face, and I went into the controls menu to see if uh, there's a quick save command, and there is! It's F5. Uh, and I noticed that you can change the crosshair. I have to keep moving the cursor away, though, because it's burning. Hmm. Already more variety than I was expecting. A snowflake, really? I'm not just getting silly, that's a duck. And a deer. What, like a hunting target? It's not even centered! Might go with that one. See, if that was a happy face, I would totally go with that, but that's a sort of a, a bland face. And that's the one we start with, so let's just loop back around to the crosshair with a dot in the middle. And there we go. Alright, let's manually save. Uh. Yeah, just making sure. It did, you know, it was just thrown off because it said loading. Can you describe what you can only see? As the bonds of flesh are broken, the world becomes apparent. Pretty sure he was making fun of me for being stuck in my body. Okay, so you can have more than one health pack. Nice. Wait. Is this not where I'm supposed to go? Jammed. Huh. More bullets. <laughs> I really don't like the way that guy is stalking me. Ugly little bastard, aren't you? Damn, he took a big chunk out of my health. The fuck was that thing? Oh, I'll be honest, I think I have an idea. The game comes with a diary. Whoa! Hey! Gotcha. Damn it! Shit, shit, shit! Gotta be careful about not running out of ammo. I don't actually have any other way of hurting people right now. Damn. You are definitely dead. Rest in peace. I'm not using the health yet because I don't know how much, how often I'll be finding them. Accuracy is inexcusable. So as I said, I have played the beginning of this game a bunch of times. Actually, just a little bit further than this. Uh, and I remember 
When I was much younger, I thought this... A six-shot weapon of forged metal grace. I thought that meant it was, like, blessed or something. But then I realized, uh... Well, it also says, uh... My military peace has seen many a country and spilled much blood over the years. And I think that might mean, uh... Do you know what? Yeah, I've got three of those. I might as well, uh, use one. Enter to activate. I don't remember if I mentioned that. Alright. That's a decent amount of health. Uh, to be restored from the thing, I mean. Just fade away because this is a game from 2001. Fair enough. I don't know this might just be a gun. I don't like the way the le the first enemy in the game seems to be able to slap me around. Won't budge. Won't budge. Didn't think so. It's an idle animation, I didn't do anything there. Ah. Oh. Shit. Wow! I have this one up royally. Yeah, this game came with a sort of diary by Jeremiah Covenant. Oh, help me, Patrick! That explained uh, a lot of the backstory of this family. Joseph's and note. I have just returned from the Standing Stones. Whatever inspired an ancient people to build these stones out on that windswept isle, I cannot guess. While I have seen sites like this before, something about the stones has resonance within me. Why would ancient people trouble themselves to build these monoliths, monoliths on such an isolated island? It would have been far easier to establish a similar ritual area on the mainland itself. I find it curious that for as long as my family has owned this house, no one has taken it upon themselves to truly research the land which we own. Considering I had not returned to the manor since I was a child, I never realized the curious nature of my inheritance. Why does this area have such a strange collection of archaeological artifacts? Well, I strongly doubt there is any connection between Neolithic stones, a decaying monastery, and the tower that the estate was built and wraps itself around. The significance of three major archaeological sites cannot be denied. The tower is a local legend itself. Supposedly, during a great storm, the tower just appeared on this site. Of course, no one can tell me when this happened. All I can tell is that it is a gutted shell of what it once was. No doubt this is why it has been, why it has been sealed off for so long. The monastery is now a, cluster, a clustered, crumbled ruin. It certainly is just a remnant of some reclusive order of monks. Seems that Ireland is dotted with these retreats. I'll have to travel out to the island someday. Perhaps I'll take the children. Joseph. So because of that diary I just mentioned, I happen to know that, uh... Jeremiah has four siblings named, uh, Aaron... Bethany, Ambrose, and Lizbeth. Does that sound? Oh. Oh. Oh! oh. 
I fucked around for too long and, uh... They actually broke into, uh, Jeremiah's bedroom. Thank God for that quick save. There was another one. Way better there, fuck. That's locked. Won't budge. Jammed. So I don't know who Joseph is. Let's, let's take a quick look out there, unless it, like, triggers that. Book. Okay, three. Amplifier stone. This strange crystalline stone seems to be a source of finite power that may be used to increase the power and effectiveness of my spell casting. I must keep my eyes peeled and ears open for its pinkish hue and low hum. P. Oh, that's what that noise was. Well, I guess I'll improve, uh, Scry then. And now I can have up to level 3 with this thing. Those beasts were after me! What in God's name were those things? They're called Howlers. And while I've never seen one before tonight, I've heard of them for years. Those weren't natural, my friend. We're fighting more than superstitions here. Perhaps I was being naive not to tell you, but there might be something more sinister at work here. When I was a boy, I encountered something I can't quite explain. You see, there was this isle of standing stones that sits just off the estate. Someone had carved a sigil into each of the stones, something indiscernible. Father had many books on the occult, one of which contained a sketch of that very symbol. I took my brothers and sisters out to the island and read from my father's book. Well, what happened? Something answered. The ocean began to boil, and a great wind whipped against us as we stood in the circle, and my siblings huddled to the ground in fear. Eventually, the wind died, and the sea settled. Patrick, I know it sounds like the ravings of a dying man, but I believe those standing stones had something to do with this. What has once been a taint upon this family has now begun to manifest itself. But you told me you're dying. Doesn't this curse end with you? Who knows? My brothers and sisters are dead, but I don't think they're really gone. I've heard some servants whispering. They think they've seen Lisbeth on the estate. My family has come for me. I sense them, Patrick. By now, you and I know the supernatural exists. You saw the Howlers. And what about our encounters with the Tersante during the war? You still even carry the Gelzebar stone with you. It's a token of the shaman's life I took. That's all. I found a scroll with a picture of the Gelzebar on it. I believe it contains the way to awaken the stone's dormant power. Very well. Let me study this scroll overnight, and I'll see what I can do in the morning. This house still hides many secrets. I'm counting on you to reveal them and put an end to this mess. Hey, I'm healed. The next day, in your guest room... Jeremiah's Disclosure. A piece to the puzzle. The scream downstairs was a result of an attack by a beast, something Jeremiah calls a howler. Similar to a dog, the animal was pale in complexion, had claws as long as my arm, and could leap several meters from a dead stop. 
I killed the fiend, but before I could thoroughly inspect the corpse, it vanished without a trace. Oh no, that's actually happening! Upon questioning Jeremiah, I, w I am a little more unnerved than I was after seeing the Howler. He told a story involving his brothers and sisters, an Isle of Standing Stones, and a sorcery book of his late father's. Maybe that's who Joseph is. Apparently the Covenant children led by Jeremiah went to the island and read from this strange book. He maintains it was simply a prank to scare his kin. He believes something from within the Ring of Stones answered back, raging the sea, angering the wind, and shaking the earth. Since that time, Jeremiah has been visited by terrible misfortune. All of his brothers and sisters have passed away. I recall one late night in a foxhole. Jeremiah showed me a picture of, his, of the youngest sister, Lizbeth. No more than a teenager, she was so striking I found it hard to concentrate in his descriptions of the others. Anyway, Jeremiah is not completely convinced they are indeed dead. Well, to be precise, he's not sure they have remained dead. I suspect that these are delusions brought on by his memory of that day of the stones. Otherwise, I can only imagine this as a terrible prank played upon a dying man. But if they are only delusions, why not inform me of them when we first spoke? Why would he not write me of such in his letter? Perhaps he did not think I would come. Investigate the Covenant Family Curse. Jeremiah, the scroll Jeremiah gave me has revealed a powerful spell. Oh, ectoplasm. It seems that with the proper concentration and focus of my mana, I am able to release ethereal bolts of ectoplasm from my hand. Unreliable at far range, the mystical damage seems quite effective in close quarters. Uh... So, this is kind of weird. You hit 1 and 2 to scroll up and down through the weapons... I guess it does the same thing either way, because I only have two weapons. And three and four to scroll through your spells. Of course I shoot ectoplasm. It couldn't be a fireball. Or an ice spike or something. No, it had to be ectoplasm. Well, on the plus side, I now have a, uh, a fallback weapon, at the very least, for if I run completely out of ammo. Man, I am cold. Like IRL. Yeah, I can hear that static, too. Uh, hello? Have you noticed anything strange going on? Apparently, Elizabeth's room was broken into last night doing a commotion. Where's her room? Just down the hall from here. It's quite a mess. Elizabeth's room. The butler said someone broke in Elizabeth's room. Perhaps I should investigate. Wait. Yeah, find Elizabeth Covenant's room. Jammed. A lot of doors in this place are jammed. Also, what's up with this one wall being completely unfurnished? Oh, that must be the tower they were talking about. That the place was, I didn't realize the place was literally built around it. B. Need a key. You need Bethany's room key. Stuck. I don't remember any of this. Oh, you got better. <laughs> Tell me what you know about Lisbeth. 
Why, she was a fetching young lass. Quite the fiery temper, though. She could be placid and calm one minute, and then suddenly she spit and curses and swinging her nails at you like an animal. Tis a pity her mother died birth in her. Indeed. Following her mother's death, I'd raised Lisbeth like my own. In the end, no waste in sickness got her. I'd cared for her when she was sick and watched her wither away to nothing. Pity a young woman has to die in the spring of her life. Ah, now she rests with her poor mother at the family mausoleum. The groundskeeper claims to have seen her recently. <laughs> poor man, seeing a ghost is never a good omen. Where can I find this groundskeeper? He's out in the gardens. You can get there through the kitchen. Your knowledge is appreciated. Thank you. Eveline's death. I spoke with a maid about Lizbeth. The, si the sibling's mother, Eveline, apparently died while giving birth to her, and the housekeeper filled the void of her maternal absence. She said Lizbeth was a very beautiful girl with a short, violent fuse who passed away from a wasting disease. I take note of the irony of someone who is so beautiful dying of such a heinous disease that calls for the destruction of their vanity. I don't know that that's irony. The maid said that the groundskeeper believes to have seen Lizbeth alive. Having seen Lizbeth with my own eyes... Oh, I was worried about that. I can only believe the maid's frightful testimony. I'll go down into the kitchen and try to find my way out to the gardens anyways. So yeah, I think that was Lizbeth out in the, uh, what was that, a greenhouse? The thing that jumped through the wall. The fuck? Need a key. You need to study a key. Is this gonna be like an open exploring game? Oh, this house needs a priest. Oh, that's, uh, uh Ambrose and Lisbeth. Oh, this is Lisbeth's room. Oh, the timer went off. Lizbeth Poetry On nights when I cannot sleep, I look from my bed to the monastery out my window. The reflections of the waters that separate us ripple across my bedroom walls, filling the room with waves of moonlight. If it is quiet enough and the wind is still, I can hear them chanting. Their prayers roll across the water and fall upon my ears like a lullaby rocking me to sleep. It fills my body with such a quiet peace. And yet I cannot help but wonder how something that provides so much security could at the same time haunt me. At midnight the chanting stops. The brilliant lights of the monastery go black except for a tiny glow that emanates from the entrance to the catacombs. As I watch that single light I can see the shadows of the monks at the entrance. It is then that I feel it slow creeping dread rise from my stomach, as if the island somehow has a hold of me. I have overheard bits and pieces of a story from hushed conversation about monks who died a horrible death years ago among these grounds. It is said that their tortured souls were never put to rest within the catacombs, and their two brothers have stood guard at the entrance each night since. I cannot help but wonder why. What are they waiting for, or hoping to ward off? Are they bound to the island of the same unknown force as I? The Lord works in such mysterious ways, but how can a just God allow his own flock to die within sacred grounds? Surely there is another force working among us, one capable of pure evil. A loving God could never allow such pain and agony. Is it that force that eats at me night uh, that eats at me at night and leaves my dreams unsettled? Are the water is enough to keep me safe? I wish just once I could lie in the grass outside the catacombs for a night and put these haunted dreams to rest. I must end these nightly visions and seek the truth. I was just gonna say, yeah, this one said... Yeah, it's a remnant of the reclusive order of monks. So yeah, I guess they, they died horribly and uh, there's only two of them left. Well! I'm Burning Dog Face. And I'll see you in the next episode of Let's Play Clive Barker's Undying. When we continue the investigation. Later!